Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the first Friday in June, being the 7th. I'm Dale Delbridge, Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. This is your weekly status chat. Before we get started, just let me ask you, if you like these presentations, hit the click, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that we can hear it go ding when we get something newly produced. Sometimes we have technical difficulty with the studio. It gives us trouble. We have to go back and reshoot something. But today we're going to hit it pretty straightforward right now. And well, here we are over on the main screen. We just Googled jobs numbers because we already knew what we were going to see before we saw it because they always give us a little bit of hints. And it says the U.S. economy added 272,000 jobs in May. And that is unexpectedly strong. So I don't know if these numbers get revised later on like we sometimes do. CNN says the key takeaways from the blowout May jobs report. That's 15 minutes ago. That's making it sound a little more positive. It, here they use uh, the time that says we have stronger pace of hiring. Yahoo says, which is the newest one I think I have on there. Yeah, oh, 41 minutes ago, Wall Street Journal. U.S. economy adds more than expected as employment rate ticks up. Well, that, these, this one bothers me a little bit in that we're adding more jobs than expected, but unemployment ticks up to around 4%. Now, personally, I don't think we're going to see anything, anything at all. This is just my thoughts. Could be wrong. Probably am. But my gut tells me that we're not going to see anything in the Fed target rates come down in form of QE, quantitative easing, that's spending the money that we already don't have, quantitative easing, unless we hit over 5 percentage point on the unemployment. That seems to be historical, may not be what this particular Fed does, but that's, uh, that's just my guess. Now, if we go back to it, what are we hearing? If, we're, if we've got more than expected jobs and the unemployment rate ticked up, did that mean that they expected us to get even worse than where we were in April? I don't know. Wall Street Journal, they always have a paywall, don't use them. Hiring wages, hiring and wages are up, reinforcing the economy's resilience. Well, they're, they're giving you that little secret word to tell you don't expect the Fed rate to change or the Fed to change directions. Jobs report May. Job gains total to 72,000 in May. Very good, very good. Now let's get on to something. We're not going to look at any of those because we knew that they were going to be what they were going to be. And I could go into the, the uh, current employment situation, pull up there. It's a little harder for my screen to display that. But I'll tell you where the, non, where the institutional survey showed they were going. Same place the uh, home survey showed. All the jobs are going to the same two areas they have all year. Government, rapidly expanding government, and health care. Because, you know, you're not going to have a sudden breakout of wellness anytime in the near future. So they're always good calls, those two. That, they also add in there to, to my, I'm not really sure where they're getting it, that the service, I think it's the entertainment side of the service, is still doing fairly well with some job hirings. Don't know. It's just the big ones are government, which is spending your money that we don't have, and health care, which is money you can't avoid f for the most part. So that's where our job growth is coming from. And I guess we're getting ready to... Uh, go in for our next IRS year. Looking at that money, we've seen the... No, we, we didn't do that, did we? We never went into the Biden budget. One of the things that's really shocking is this new unrealized tax thing that they're going to do. All right, say you buy a stock for 100 bucks, stock jumps up, Elon or somebody gets it and it jumps up to uh, 100 and a quarter. Biden wants to tax that quarter you didn't take, okay? If you sold the stock, we would have to do that. That's under the current law. If you sell it, then you realize that gain. But it, before you could sell it at $125, it could also go down to $80 and you lose $20 on it. Do you get to count that? No. Under the proposal, this brand new tax he's proposing, there would be no allowances for losses, taking losses from your initial money going into it. They're just going to give it, they're just going to tax you if it goes up. And what it means is every year as your house appreciates, you'll get an additional tax bill if Biden gets this through. But anyway, I don't want to talk about taxes too much. I want to get right back over here to this cute little chart I have brought up from Federal Reserve St. Louis. Remember, we have different Fred, different Feds for different things. FRED is the economic data. Federal Reserve economic data comes out of St. Louis. We have Atlanta. We look at the, uh, at the GDP related data. We, they collect that for us. So what do we got here? Let me see if I can roll it up just a little bit more on my screen so I can get it in here. All right. So we have the Fred graph. And we have three, three lines here, if you can see it on your screen. We have the red, which is all employees, number of employees. This is employment. It's an index, total non-farm. We have the consumer price index, all urban consumers, all items 
in the U.S. City Average. This is not separating out the core that makes it look a lot better. This is, I think this is better to look at the whole uh, CPI. And employment cost index, wages and salaries, private industry workers, so we're non-farm at this point. And when we look at this, one of the things that we notice is all these are indexes, and I've got them set for year-over-year -year changes. And what do we see back here in 2022? We see the red line, which is employees. That goes down during a recession. And green, the consumer price index goes down in a recession because we're getting deflation or deflationary action. And we see that the blue line didn't even start. So let's go ahead and take this, if I can make it do it. We'll slide this past these various recessions and get it from this maxed out 1962 all the way to the end, back where we want it. We're now, let's see, take it to, say, 2000, and we'll look at that. But you notice that the red line dips. Red line is all the employees dips during a recession. So it dips below the zero line there. So that's how we know we have a recession. We also look at the green line, which is the CPI. We see that it typically goes down during a recession, eventually, because that's the deflation. But if you look back here in 1975, it climbed all the way through 1975. It climbed through the 2008 before taking a reversal of fortune and dropping down about 2009. So let's bring it up here to just about that 2008. And we see it. We see how these behave. The consumer price index, our inflation measure that we typically see, it weights housing a little bit more than the PCE does. We see that it dropped during our 2000, our COVID, and it dropped eventually in 2008 crisis, that big long recession. But you see, it went sideways for quite a while. Look at this. Our, C our inflation went sideways. It was going up before we entered that recession and hit sideways for a while, even increased even further in about July of 2008 before it finally reversed and came negative. And we saw some deflation when it crosses over that that black line, that zero line, started to come back up. Even though we were out of the recession, we were still getting inflation, getting things back. But what do we see on the red line, which is the all employees non-farm? We see that they just started losing out, losing out, losing out. And it only when the employment kind of turns around are we actually seeing the recession recovery in. So what are the direction of our numbers? Now, if we go to this last bit, we know we had the, the whole shutdown, the government's unconstitutional shutdown of everybody. We went down, we kind of spiked up with all that free money, and we've kind of normalized probably about the low here around September of 2021. But we peaked up a little bit and we've gone down ever since. So we're kind of losing on the employment on the number, on the index number. And we see that the blue line, let me catch the blue line, blue line, get off there, blue line, the blue line, is the employment cost because this is tied to your salaries and wages of your non-farm, your private industry. And we see that wages kind of went up a little bit as we were having the first little bit till about 2022. And for the last two years, our wages on the index are actually retreating a little bit. Yes, they're going up in real numbers, in real dollars. But as, it's, as this index is tied to a specific date on dollars, we're actually losing buying power over the last two years. And we know we haven't, we haven't conquered inflation. The green line is then the inflation, CPI. And, and we can see, according to this, our last date we have here is April. So we're already one month behind on the employment non-farm. And we are April for the CPI, all urban areas. So what's it saying? Kind of looks to me like we're trucking along in our current state of discomfort. I don't say we're hurting yet, but we're certainly having a discomfortable situation. Employment numbers, they say, is coming up ahead of where we expect them to be. I don't know if we can believe it because they're just as apt to revise them downward in no time at all. But right now they're up. So it shows in, in, employment is going up a little bit. We're up to about 4%. How we got more jobs and higher unemployment suggests that we've got a lot more people coming from somewhere to do some work and somebody is getting a job. So I don't expect any kind of change in policy by the Fed, just a guess, just a pure guess on my part, till we hit unemployment of at least 5%. Now, something else could happen. We could, we could actually see the commercial real estate start to fail, the banking causing the banking fails. We could see that that might create some QE. But all in all, I don't really see that, that there's going to be any hurry whatsoever to get the target rate down and mortgage rates down. Now, I did have a, a picture that I will show you that was put out in the greater Nashville area by the company. The company put this out just today for May. Shows that we're still seeing increases in pricing. 
Now we know that one of the reasons we're doing that is because we have the inflation. The houses are built with stuff and filled with stuff and when stuff costs more money, it's going to cost more to have a house. So you're going to have this possibility. You need to consider for yourself, do I really want to wait to some indefinite length of period in 2025 perhaps before we start dropping the mortgage rates down because it takes a while to get that Fed rate down if they're only going to bump it a quarter of a point. When they finally do bump it, if they were to even bump it three months in a row, that would only bring it down three quarters of a percent. In the meantime, what's the inflation going to do to your overall economy? So there we are. Let's go ahead and get to our numbers right after this. Hello, I'm Del Delbridge of Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you are currently unrepresented and would like to know how to compare up to three properties side by side and room by room, then go over to my new YouTube channel. Call Dell to sell. That's one L and Dell, no spaces. Watch the demo on Real Scout, and then call me, and we'll set up your exclusive ad-free account today. All right, last week, 531 of 24, we had 20,811 in the opportunities that rose over the previous period. We had 4381 in the under contract still showing that dropped a little bit over the previous period. And that week, we saw a two integer percentage point drop from 23 to 21 on the ratio between them. This week. We have six, seven of 24. We had 20,944 in the opportunities that slightly up, but not significantly, and 4,315 in the under contract still showing. The integer ratio between those two specific numbers remained unchanged at 21%. So we appreciate you watching. Have a great weekend. It's beautiful today. It was hard to get motivated. Maybe some days you have some of that yourself, but uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Have a great day.